Welcome to the Red V TV Instant Fan Reaction, supported by A Star Recruitment for the 2021 season. Following Saints, 23 points to 18 victory over the Huddersfield Giants this evening in the Challenge Cup quarter final. Joined once again by Kev and Peter. Good evening, gentlemen. Another winning evening. performance. Evening. And um, we move on. Peter, what did you what did you make of that one? Um, well, it was that was a nervy old match, wasn't it? Um, I mean, credit to Huddersfield for making it a proper cup tie. We knew what they were going to do, um, but it's, sometimes it's difficult to play against that. Although I feel that the only time they scored is when we piggybacked them up the field. I, the three tries came from a penalty, followed by six again, six again, um, and obviously the last one. I think we got, they got the goal line, they get the goal line dropout before half time the second one um, so again it points to clean up the discipline and we win these games a little bit easier but these games are purely about winning I know people say oh, you know not being so good in attack and whatnot, but you know we do this another twice we get a cup right? people uh, don't remember how you win cups you remember you win in a cup um, 2001 final at Twickenham was that a swashbuckling exciting final no, it was a, a it was a drudge fest in the rain, and we won thirteen six against Bradford. No one remembers that was a terrible game. People remember, oh, we won the cup. That's it. And th these are the things we need to remember. Yeah, we'd like to be a bit more fluent going forward, but you know, it is what it is. We need to still need to clean up the discipline. But we won, and we're in the semi final. What more can we do? My only memories of that game at Twickenham was being it being half built, and yeah. the, the Tommy score uh, in our, uh, down our end. Yeah. And, the, and the lovely black pinball kit, which I'd like to see recreated, actually. Kevin, yeah. <laughs> that said, we've got two more wins before, um, obviously, lifting a cup. But we will have to be much better in a semi and a final to come up, when we come up against better opposition. Um, yeah, yeah, probably. But you just have to manage the game. As Peter says, um, as long as you're better than the other team, doesn't don't have to be your swashbuckling best. You've just got to manage the game. Um, that's what cup rugby is all about. Just you don't look at the pictures after, just look at them. It's just lifting the cup, isn't it? That's all that matters. Um, and listen, at first half, I thought Huddersfield started controlling the game quite well. The kicking game was was really good, just controlling and and almost trying to do what Kevin Sinfield did to us for years and years and years of, of just pinning us back and trying to turn us around and trying to make it difficult for us to come out. Um, but we're seven from seven, aren't we now? Um, there's things that you'd fix. There's things that are going well. Um, we're not, not going along too badly, are we? Now, the game didn't start off that well, did it? Um, obviously, Tommy Makinson going off injured, a, re a recurrence of his foot injury after three minutes. Th that could have really set us off course. Luckily, we went with two backs on the bench. Um, so Jack Wellesby was able to slot in at centre with Kev moved to the wing. Not you, Kev, but the real Kev. Nah, I didn't to the wing. <laughs> He'd be the fattest winger ever. <laughs> like Eddie Batten. Mill the wing too wing. quicker than me. <laughs> um, but considering we were an interchange down for 80 minutes... And then obviously Louis going off before half time. We we did well to manage that game of force. And you talk about Huddersfield pinning us back. I thought they did a lot of pinning us down and arms in awkward positions. And there was a general, I don't want to say grubbiness, but professionalism from them. And um, they probably got the technique in the game against us a couple of weeks ago and realised that it, it could potentially be a winning a winning one. And they employed that tactic tonight. And I think we expected it. And we did well to overcome it in the end. Yeah, said, you're right. I think in, in the second... Sorry, I've already started answering this because you haven't put it to anybody. But you're right. But in the second half, we got the roll on as well and we kept getting quick play of the ball. Um, rather tragically, I was making a note of uh, like six agains and penalties and, and you're saying like we're in a, a WhatsApp group and people are saying child was killing us. <laughs> Listen, it, they slow it down. That's what every team does against us. Because if you let James Roby, Lachlan Coote, Aaron Smith get the ball quickly from dummy half and feed it onto a forward, they're going to start punching holes. Or you even give it to one of your backs like Mark Percival, who was great tonight. Kevin Nagama, who's had his best game, I'd say, for us in a while there tonight. All of a sudden, they start making yards. 
and teams can't afford to do that. So they slow it down as much as they can. If the ref then turns around and says that's fine, that's how Saints have got to manage the game. And this is where we turn around about saying having a plan A and a plan B. If teams are going to slow it down, we've just got to counter that by A, trying to get on the front foot, and if not, just being smarter than them anyway. Um, I'm, I'm Kev, I've got issues with the six again, though, because yes, um, it, it, it doesn't seem to be managed the same for both teams in the same game. Is it a subconscious thing? Now, in football years ago, it used to always say the big teams get the decisions. Is it a case for us, because our role and our attack is goes forward so well, do we tend not to get the six agains because refs don't look for it as much? Whereas when the opposition is playing against us, and is it a term a bit like leveling it up? It just doesn't seem to be managed very well. And and the other question I've got for both of you, and I'll start with Peter on this one. The six again is obviously <coughs> was meant to keep the game flowing and be instead of a penalty. If the six again rule was taken away, how many of them would be given as penalties? Yeah, I did notice that uh, that comment on Twitter. And it's a very, very good point because normally things like, you know, six again, hand on the ball. Hand on the ball wouldn't necessarily be a penalty. We'd be shouting, get your hand off the ball. Um, and then if we did it again, it would be a penalty. Um, so you make a very good point here. Um, I think certainly the, the issues with the, the six again, as we said last week, we seem to be saying the last few weeks, the intention of that was to speed up the game, to make it cleaner, to make it more fluent. Um, whether it's working that way, I don't know. Whether perhaps, I think maybe Saints have getting a reputation amongst referees, whether they're going in with a preconceived idea of what we're going to do. I'm not saying referees are necessarily biased against us. I'm just saying that um, in all sports, maybe some teams, they know oh, they know that this team is going to play in a certain way or that player is going to do certain things. And referees, in the back of their mind, are looking out for it before the game starts. Now, if that is the case, then that's something that we need to work on. Um, because we, we do seem to be in the you know at the, the wrong end of the not necessarily the penalty count but certainly the six again count we've been banging this drum for a few weeks about Saints going to the RFL having a chat with referees and um, we knew we need to paint a better picture um, I know I know we've been not bagging referees but saying they're maybe being harsher to us but there are certain things we can do give them a better picture don't put your hand on the ball and the tackle is off and once you go to ground get it off because he's not going to offload we need to do more ourselves now because it's it's going to cost us um, in big games against better teams. Not even like how how supposedly our attack is not functioning because we scored some great tries tonight. Um, but it's going to be giving better teams more ball uh, and more territory um, by our own I don't know stupidity, perhaps you might say, by not you know not doing what the referee asks you to do and not knowing how a particular referee. It's going to handle a game. We need to study how referees are handling it and react to that as well. There's more I think we can do um, rather than just expecting referees to do more. Is it a job for our, our VR team, Kev, maybe, to, to get our video team to produce some sort of montage to send to the RFL where we can turn around and say, listen, they're doing this and we're not getting penalties. We touch the ball and, we, and we're getting it given against us. Do we need to start presenting our case and fighting back a little bit? Because I know one of the comments which I'll put up from the fans who've come through on Twitter is talking about our discipline, discipline, discipline. But I'm not seeing it. I'm, there's, pe- there's six against getting given against us. And I'm, I'm bewildered about what the four at times. And then obviously we are watching Red V tinted spectacles. And the amount of times I'm looking at play the balls and I'm thinking, that's a penalty, that's a penalty. He's quite deliberately stepping over the man deliberately to slow us down and nothing gets given. Um, whether it's for us to, to put together a montage, we could do. I'm not going to keep repeating myself as I have done for the past three weeks, saying that we need to get referees in, whether it's the head of referees or whatever. Uh, listen, people know my, my views on that. It's time to, it is time to get them in and get them spoken to. Um, we were... We lost the set restart count five to two. Um, I made it. Huddersfield had three in the first half, two in the second. We had one in each half. And there was one on 60 minutes. Um, I think it was Joe Greenwood uh, was lying on top of Sione Metaltia. And he was making no effort to move. And the ref shouting at him, never mind a set restart. That's a penalty. He's, he's, it's not a case of slowing the game down. He stopped the game. But 
And, and this isn't to go with James Child, because I don't think he had a, a bad game or as bad a game as people will make out and will probably comment on this. I really don't. Um, but you, you think, as you say, it's the inconsistency. It's the fact that they wouldn't be giving us penalties just for having a hand on the ball. Is it my understanding? Is it ref's different interpretations of it? Whatever it is, if I'm a neutral or a brand new fan watching that game, and you hit six again, you go, well, what was that for? Don't know. Hand on the why, ball. Yeah, why are we why are we complicating the game sometimes? And we're saying this, we keep saying this from a winning position as well. We keep complicating the game sometimes that it's not an easy game to follow. I mean, it never has been really. But with rules like this, does it make it easier to watch? Didn't last week. Does it make it easier to understand? No, it never does. Because the interpretations are so different. Um, as I say, I'm not bagging James Child because I think he had a decent game. I think it's just a, a decision that's been brought in and the, the refs are hamstrung with. They've got no other option to, to than to actually enforce it. And how they're enforcing it may well be a, yeah. an unconscious bias um, where they think, well, Saints are really quick and and so I'm, I'm not going to look at this or Saints keep putting the hand on the ball, so I'm going to make sure I keep my eye on that. They might do, and they don't realise they're doing it. And that's going to be the difference between a conscious bias and and an unconscious bias for, for those who know the difference. I just it, it just frustrates me. It just, it, it's, it's become a rule that you thought might quicken the game up and might make it a little bit better to watch. And I find myself thinking, is it working? Kev, I think it works in reverse in terms of, you're trying to quicken the game up, but a team knows, you know, if they turn the ball over and it's in, like, Saints pick the ball up and we're inside our own 20. Do you know what? Give away a six again. Close to the to, close to our, our try line. Because do you know what? It might be on the first tackle, but you get a chance to reset your defence by of, slowing it down. Of, but four of Huddersfield six against tonight were in our half. And that's where it works against us. But the, yeah. you talk about when we're getting six against, but when, when and where in the field. Sometimes well, six the, against the half, half. Both, both, both of ours were in the half. Uh, one on the second tackle, one on the fourth. This is tragic. This I've written it down. One on the second, one on the fourth. Huddersfields were fourth, second, 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 first. But four of them were in our half and one was in those that we've given away to. And then the opposite way around where they've given those away in their own half. So I think yeah, I think you've done some good work there, Kevin. I also think that someone at Saints needs to needs to go through. I'm sure they've got a video analyst who would look at um, uh, you know, the, the actual playing side of the game. But I think we need someone to mark out who what type of six again we've conceded. Probably they'll find more often than not it's hand in the ball. Mm-hmm. Where they're hap- where they're happening, you know, what time, you know, in the match, what when how many tackles in, find out what who's doing them, what we're conceding, who's yeah. doing them as well, yeah. But I think um, certainly that what the offence, what the offence is, and if, if find out what it is, I think seventy percent of the time will be hand on the ball, and then right, yeah. just stop doing it. So well, Kev, know what they're looking for, what they're hot on, stop it. Kev, if you're not in one of the four thousand successful in the ballot who is in the <laughs> spectators, I think Saints yeah. have found the rule uh, a job <laughs> for you as our six again analyst at the club. Yeah. I could do. Actually, I was just interested in we've we spoken about it for the past like three or four weeks. So I was just interested to see how it went. And and it's I also I counted penalties as well, which was tragic. But I just wanted to see if we were getting pinged. And we were we we won the penalty count seven six. So I bet you mark I bet you mark appearances in the programme as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, cross out the names when right. they're uh, when they're not there. Okay, we've we've banged on about the six again enough now. In attack, yeah. we're still looking a little bit clunky. If you looked at our mentions on Twitter at half time, there's a lot of people banging the drum that they want Holbrook back. It's not fantastic flow and attack in rugby. Holbrook's gone, it ain't coming back. Yeah, not this year at least. This is the formula that we're going with. Listen, we know this side can perform better than attacking. I'm sure Wolf knows that, the players know that, the fans know that. But we're winning games every yeah. week. Yes, maybe not at a canter, but we're, we've got a winning formula. So people need to be a little bit more, I don't know, 
less critical. And I understand that Saints fans want free flow and attack in rugby. But as you say, you've got to earn the right to play. We've got yeah. injuries. We've got players out. It's early in the year. We will get better as the season goes on, I'm sure. Um, I don't know, but it's it's becoming like we we seem to like hating ourselves at times. I think as a fan base, it's easy it's easy to criticise. Though it is very very easy to see one negative thing, and with the immediacy of social media, you can just boom, straight out there. Don't have to think about it. It's gone. You start talking about something else a little bit later on, and as you say. Listen, we've not clicked going forward, although the pressure that we had, especially second half, that was that was good to see. It was heartening to see, wasn't it? The fact that we were getting that on. And a couple of little silly mistakes kind of uh, took that off. I think it was a, an Amor push, where we've seen that twice in two weeks now, where he's pushed the player and, and we've had a penalty given us against us when we've, when we've been building a bit of pressure. Um, Kev, again, though... Just, Again, though, you talk about that one that Kyle, Kyle Amo gave away for pushing the defender away. That's a penalty because he's not he's not got away at the, from the tackle and allowing them to play the yeah. ball, and it's gone against yeah. us. But it, listen, it, we've had we've had one of them for the past two weeks. Vitality gave one away last week, but it's just the immediacy of social media that you can just fire it out. Listen, it's a pipe dream if people think Holbrook's coming back. He's not. Okay. Whether whether Wolf gets another year on his contract, I don't know. Listen, whether there's Chris, Christian Wolf, Kev, there. if Christian Wolf wins a grand final playing this style of rugby, he, he, won't, get another, he won't get another year because he'll go and get an NRL job. Well, yes, true. Yeah, true. One, th- the one yeah. thing I'd like to say is, um, sorry to cut in there, Kev. Um, right. I'm, not, I'm never sorry, about, you don't worry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> people are talking about how the attack is going, but I read something through the week um, about how I think, uh, you know, Warrington are above Hull in the league despite Hull getting scored in more points. And the way that the, the league is set out this year in terms of being points average to be the top, it's going to help the teams who have a better defence. So perhaps Wolf has looked at that and thinks we need to, we're, if we're going to win anything, particularly Super League, the defence has to be the thing that wins, is it? Because if it's, you know, looking at points average and whatnot, if your defence is not conceding points and ours, you know, by and large isn't, then we are going to be in a much, much healthier position um, rather than teams who are maybe winning 24-20. If we're winning 18-6, obviously it's a bigger difference, but in terms of points conceded, yeah. you know, over, over the course of the season, it's, it's, going to, it's going to be that that wins us uh, the Super League. Where are we to win it again? Um, why we want, you know? Yeah, sorry, just I'm just p- I'm picking up tweets here as well. Jo- uh, Don McCormick's mm-hmm. just come up with one on um, going back to the six again, which I, I, re- I really want to read out. Also, my issue isn't a biased one. Josh Jones got pinged for a six again on around 34 minutes, which led to a Saints try, and it was exactly the same. He was left scratching his head and rewound his and still don't know what it was for. Just a really crap rule. What was the issue beforehand? Yeah. It's really frustrating me. It's, it's, and do you know what? I think it's really affecting the game, and it's making the game a really poor spectacle. There are a lot less six agains in the NRL. There are a lot, there are a lot, a lot less N, uh, six agains in the NRL when you watch those matches. Um, you know, maybe they've learned. You know, the referees have adapted, and they're maybe not so hot in some things. Whereas here, I think we're still, um, you know, almost looking to give them, um, looking for things that they can penalise rather than letting the game flow. You can still let the game flow by not penalise, not penalising someone from his hand in the ball for two seconds or a second longer than he needs to. Let the game flow that way. You don't want to get it where it's been spoiled by, you know, slowing it down and hands in the ball too much. But if you're looking for stuff, you know, if you're being, you know, drilling down and being very, you know, almost scientifically looking for stuff through a microscope, you're going to find something to give it every play of the ball, quite honestly. So I think they maybe need to ease up a little bit and um, let the game breathe. Should we go into the real positives tonight? Um, moment of... Class from Mark Percival, showing yep. why he's um, still the main centre and why we shouldn't be mm-hmm. casting him off. It's bizarre. Some some of the comments we've had this week so far, Kev, I think we've been picking them up, haven't we? Mark Percival shouldn't be in the side. Sio Matauti is not good enough and not consistent <laughs> enough. Um, who else should be out of it? Phil George Thompson. Yeah. Joel, Th- Joel Thompson's not good enough. Joel Thompson isn't flashy enough. None of our uh, signings have been pressed. 
Yeah, none of our, yeah, that was a good yeah. one. None of our yeah. signings have impressed. Is there anyone that should be in the team just out of interest, apart from Johnny Lomax? <laughs> Jack, Jack Wells must be one to 13, that's about Zach, it. Yeah. yeah. That's and that's it. And pe- people forget that Jack Wellsby, apart from um, the first three minutes of the, the game tonight, Jack Wellsby's played every game, hasn't he? He's mm. featured in every game in, in, in um, at a full-back or centre. So the likes of Wellsby will need a rest eventually. I, I, and, yeah. and this isn't a knock at, at people, but when we were asking them earlier in the week who would make your match day 17, people said, oh, I'll give Kevin Agarman a week off or maybe Regan Grace because they played every minute. Well, what, not, what about the 20-year-old who's, yeah. who's filling in the different positions? He, he's someone who still, he needs to be dipped in and out of the team every couple of weeks. Well, every couple of weeks, have a week off. Yeah. Checking what you've done. It's not going to be. It's not a dropping. It's a resting. No. It's a listen. This yep. is good for your your development. Mm-hmm. Um, and eventually, I mean, I have absolutely no doubts that he will take the number one shirt when Lachlan Coop leaves us straight away. I think he'll just be straight into that number one shirt. Uh, but he, he's still developing. He's still a young lad. Thirty odd games. Um, I think people need to. Listen, you don't have to be positive all the time, but you also don't have to be negative and start trying to pick every little bit. Just because Tione Mitalcia hasn't scored eight tries already this season from the two different positions he's played, or Joel Thompson hasn't flicked the ball out like Zeb Tye did. The different players, the different players, don't worry about it. They've played seven games for Saints in first-grade rugby. They will get better as the team gets better. Guess who back Sion you yeah. for yeah. first try tonight, Kev? You. <laughs> Should have backed Michael Lawrence. <laughs> um, obviously, other positives tonight. Johnny Lomax's range of passing. Not going to talk too much about it because it's just Johnny Lomax. Yeah. Um, Regan Grace. Some awesome finishes. This and that's what we yeah. pay him the money for because he's class. Oh, yeah. Absolute class. Um, do you know what? Theo Farge gets bagged every week. And do you know what? He'll, he may he never he may never be the most dynamic attacking half back in the world, but he set up one, and his pinpoint kick at the end probably made sure we won the match. So do you know what? Yeah. Theo's putting himself in the shop window either for a, a really good contract elsewhere or that he stays at Saints. And equally, I thought Alan Smith coming back into the side tonight had a, a, a yeah. decent spell. Yeah, I also Same. want to give out some raps to Joe Batchelor. I thought defensively, yeah. particularly, he was yeah. tremendous. Particularly in that first half, he hit so many tackles and good, effective tackles as well. Because um, it's a big year, people forget it's a big year for Joe as well. He's been here, uh, I think, three seasons now, and he might be one of the ones they're looking at. Will we keep him? Will we let him go? Because there's some good young lads like Jake Wingfield coming through who have perhaps overtaken him in the pecking order. But tonight, against you know, a big Huddersfield team. And remember, with a, it was a, almost like an Ian Millward-esque bench tonight with two backs on it um, mm. against a against a big, big set of boys. Um, and we perhaps needed that extra bulk, but we, we managed to deal with it without having, you know, a third big lad on the bench. So, you know, these guys, you know, Big Al played a lot more minutes than normal. I think I said, I thought Joe Batchelor, I'll give him big raps as well. He's an unsung hero tonight for me. I'm just going to name one player as well who I just caught a little bit just just when you sent me the Zoom link um, of Sky saying there was, um, what was it, a lack of um, get almost guidance, like influence from Alex Wormsley and James Roby. From James Roby, I thought, he, he, and we spoke about this, um, I think it was the last instant from reaction about how with all the, potential injuries that, that we had in the second row, James Roby could fit in in the second row or at loose forward. Yeah. And I think he I think he he, he tiller does lovely through the game. Aaron Smith, yeah, jumps in at dummy half, but James Roby's still an influence on that game at, at 13. Just because he's not getting his hands on the ball every single time we've we've been tackled does not mean that he's not an influence. And yeah. I heard that and I hope I've got it out of context because Otherwise, they've, they've just watched a completely different game to me. Um, yeah. well, other thing to mention, the cheap shot on, on Louis. Um, yeah, that, that was a bad one. That was a bad one. Do you know what? If you go, if, if it's around the legs, it's a cannonball. 
He was he was quite clearly tackled. Three men, tackle was completed, and he gets yeah. and he gets a cheap shot off him. Um, which obviously they say he lost his footing. No, he was all over the show when he got the hit. Yeah. Um, for them to then go and put on reports, I'm assuming we must have reported it ourselves and asked him to to list it. Because if he sees it and puts it on report, then he has to give a penalty. And, and he yeah. didn't. He's given it the other way. Um, failed a head test, didn't come back on. And do you know what? Listen, I think we've done that tough tonight. We had enough injuries to begin with. Yeah. Um, we've lost two players. Yeah. Yeah. Should we go to the tweets uh, in a minute because they're very negative. Yeah, we well, that's it. Yeah, no, you, you're right. We have done that tough, and and that is a good win. It's a good sign of a good win, and probably a, I, I am going to say a fortunate choice of bench because I'm sorry. You look at Parsi, Amor, Smith, and Wellsby on a bench, and you think that's a bit light. The two Smith and Wellsby, you think I get Smith as a as a um, as another pivot, and you can move a couple of people around. But I think Wellsby is he just in there because? Um, he's been playing well and he feels like he can't leave him out and we've, yeah. we have got a little bit fortunate there so oh. fair play but yeah. the good thing about the Louis head knock is we've got a long turnaround now haven't we yeah yeah so we so, can Monday the Salford game isn't it yeah it is so we've, we've got chance to well as long as he, he continues to pass all the protocols over the next couple of days hopefully he'll be uh, he'll be fine yeah but you say a, a fortunate bench but who would you have put on there because for me, Morgan Knowles was one of those where we could have named you on the uh, bench or Peter. Uh, sorry, in the 21. So we seem to do this every week. We just try and throw people off by putting a random name in there. Then Lewis was, Dodds missed out. Was, Dan Norman has missed out. And Davis has missed out as well. Davis. Davis is a second roller. That's that's in, the other one you could say. Because Davis, as well, I think, can play centre. Listen, it, it's worked. It's worked. I, that's it. I, I do think we've got Slightly, slightly fortunate with unfortunate that Makers has got injured, but that we've had such a good replacement there. Yeah, we can always fit it out here. But I just think usually your usual bench is three big lads and yeah. maybe a little one. Kev, I disagree yeah. though. I don't think it's fortunate. I just don't think you'd ever see Smith or Wells be missing out for Davis in a, in a, in a it, cup game like it, that. It, it, it's on. It's on size though. You, you don't it, as. Peter said, "You heart back to the Millwood days when you ended up with a bench that seemingly looked like a load of backs, like Sean Hoppy's on the bench and Tony Stewart or people like that." And you turn turning around thinking, "What are we going to do when we have to start um, bringing like rotating your big lads and you've got one prop to rotate?" Yeah, but th- that said, I think if you leave somebody like Jack Wellsby or Aaron Smith out tonight and go with Davis and it doesn't work out, then yeah. your coach gets crucified. So we've Don't, got yeah. Thanks for agreeing, Dave. Yeah, I mean, it worked out very well in terms, not for Tommy Makinson, but in terms of when that injury happened, that we had Jack Wells, but he could slot in. But if it hadn't happened, um, then you look at the fact that you know we could have had maybe like Dan Norman, but would you give him his Saints debut in a knockout cup tie? Would you you play a young Davis rather than Jack Wellsby in a knockout that's cup not- tie? It's a lot of pressure on these guys as well. That's that's yeah. the thing as well. So, so you're right, cool. Kev. It worked out well for us. It did. Can I just, before we, um, this is the, the bench that I thought about. It was before Millwood. It was uh, the 1999 grand final bench. Yeah. Paul Wellens, <laughs> Sean Long, Sean Hoppy, Vila Matautia. That's, the, that's a tiny bench, isn't it? Vila oh, well. makes up for it. It does, yeah. Right. Tweets, we've got less than 10 minutes remaining, 9.47 and counting. Uh, Dave Powell made hard, uh, said we made hard work of it. Mark Cavana wishes we had taken Watson rather than Wolf. That would be Ian Watson who's won one game this season by a point. I listen, I'm not I'm being facetious there. Yes, he's a great coach, but listen, if it was the other way around, you don't, you, yeah, you don't you don't know if Mark if uh, Mark Watson, Ian Watson would have been um, successful at Saints. Yeah. That's it. Uh Lozzy Klingers, great win, sort of game we'd have lost in the past, yet, yeah, but the Saints are machine right now, and that's been enhanced by Matthaus yet. Yeah. Yeah, great comments. Yep. AOs, 1878, that was tough to watch. Happy with the win and glad to be in the semis. Discipline's a worry. See, it's all right saying discipline's a worry. And there's another comment, I think it's Matt below, saying discipline, discipline, discipline. Which bit? Because you've got to be able to identify what we're doing wrong. And, and it's all right saying it's what the refs are seeing. 
but we're not seeing it, so that's why we're obviously we've just had a big discussion on it. Um, Stewart's relief six again rule, no consistency about it. Oh, back to AO eighteen seventy eight. Luckily, we haven't played any of the top sides yet. Now you talked about this, didn't you, Kevin? The preview, saying yeah. when the time comes, we'll raise our game. We've got Catalan yeah, and Wolf we'll coming up. Yeah, I, th- I think we're one of them teams. I genuinely think that we raised our game. I mean, well, you see that second half against Huddersfield, we found out what we were up against, raised it and won. Just put go. the pressure on, applied the pressure and won. I think that's just what we are. Dan yeah. Thomas, uh, two men down, motivated opposition, absolute Wild West referee, and he thinks <laughs> it's a I like that too, Wild West referee. <laughs> Dan, Dan, go away. You don't realise you're not meant to be positive in our comments. <laughs> uh, Don McCormick in the semis, but if we're going to win the cup against the best team, we need to be more cohesive and more dominant in the forwards. Uh, Percy's attitude is great considering his recent injury and Grayson's finished the men's. Relieved to get approved, but neighbours about a cup win. Measured, I'll take that one. The Saints, hard fought win, tough to watch times, but did enough to be more, what was a very useful outfit. Cup ties just need a win and we were good enough again. Yeah, Kev, we say Correct. this every week, don't we, on, when we talk about cup games. Fans always say, we want to win, or we don't care how we win, as long as we win, a point will do it off somebody's yeah. backside and we win that yeah. way. And then when we do, people complain. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true, yeah. Uh, Gary Eccleston, almost like these penalties in six against are scripted. Knew after the coot no side that they get marched down the field. Saints aren't very fluid in attack at the moment, but ref decisions are keeping teams in game against us. Fully agree. That's what we've been saying. Got a Fishwick, a win is a win in a hard fought game. The attack is still not on fire with the opposition and ball. Still not on fire with all the position and ball, but we're still in the hat for the semi. Yep. Martin Davis, another positive comment. So, this is quite balanced, this actually. Um, Matt, 362, it was never in doubt. Come on, the B. Yes. Correct. Uh, Matt Forshaw, toughed it out. We've got to work on attack and giving away silly penalties for the win. Brenda, don't know what, the, what they are. Frustrating, I don't know what she's talking about. Sorry, because I've I don't know what's in relation to. Must be six again. It's got to be. Bry, busy yeah, for the physios. Just about did enough. Ryan Davenport, Port. That was hard work. Six again, six again, six again. Killing us. And half the time, the opposition are doing the same, but getting the way with it. Do you know what we haven't played this week, Kev? Peter. Go on. Go on. Oh, the, the, the buzzer. <laughs> um, Ali said it was a nail-biting game, but ultimately within a semi, that's what we wanted. Six games are frustrating. There seems to be no rhyme or reason. Uh, happy to be enjoyed. Along we go. And she'll see the next game live. When is, it, is, it, is it next game live? Yeah, yeah. It's Salford, isn't it? On the, a week on Monday. Is it a week Monday? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if someone's had an email. It's very confident. Yeah. I'm, I'm currently now just checking. After reading uh, a one from at RLFan underscore 13, good finish by Percival, but remember, he's lucky to still be in this team according to some of the Rugby League Einsteins that are Saints fans, which has just tickled me. <laughs> a little bit harsh having to go tell fans, but there we go. But it's just still tickled me. I'm See now having think, a look. Kevin? Well, yeah. I'm now having a look to see if I have had an email off since. But nothing's come through the post. Oh, St. Tara FC? No, it's just a preview of the game. Uh, oh, well, I'll keep checking. Ooh, see them for the next comments below. <laughs> Popped up again. Uh, Stuart Ross, relief, six again, rule, no consistency about it. Matt, some of these again. Um, and, we've had, and we've had the other comments. But yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, week on Monday. For some reason, I didn't realise that. I thought we had another game in between before fans were back. But yes, will there's okay to finish off. Then we've got four minutes left. I'll start with you, Peter. Will okay. fans in the crowd make a difference to our performances? Well, I think that lies with the fans. Hopefully, you both will be there. I think the four thousand that are back a week on Monday against Salford. It's been over a year since you were at a game. If you're not going to be excited and going absolutely mad for it and shouting your head off for the full 80 minutes, there's something wrong. It's in the fans' hands. The influence, yes. If you want to go and make an influence, go and do it. Shout for everything. 
sing for the 80 minutes, shout offside, shout six again every time um, we're carrying the ball and they've got their hand on it. Put pressure on the referees, absolutely. Go and enjoy it. I'll be, I'll be very jealous um, that obviously I'm, I won't be at the game, but it's absolutely right that all the season ticket members get the opportunity before someone like me gets a chance to come down. But, uh, you know, go, like, go there and make the influence, absolutely. Um, if it was me, I'd be like a cat in a hot tin roof. I'd be all over it like a, like a you know, like a cheap suit, giving it big yee half from minute one to minute 80. Everyone that's going, enjoy it. Go and make a pile of noise and get the boys the biggest win of the season. Jeff? Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen with me, is it? <laughs> I'm just being stood at the back reaching to Dave. Well, if I'm allowed to stand within a metre of him. <laughs> and Kev, if, you, if you're lucky enough to get through the ballot, you'll stand where you're told to. Yeah, we'll stand where <laughs> I'm told. Um, no, listen, it is in, it, it, Peter's right, it is in fans' hands and, and it could make all the difference. Um, I say it's just going to be good to get back in there, though, isn't it? It's been a while. I mean, the last live game that, that I know me and Dave went to was the uh, Castleford game that at the time we didn't think that should be on because of what was happening. And we ended up standing away from the crowds. Um, but even even under those um, kind of situations, you'd, you'd, I'd be quite happy to not be able to stand near anybody and uh, and watch the live game. I'm itching to get in there. Kev, next in some fan reaction, you get to be stood next to me with a microphone. Oh God. <laughs> Fingers crossed I don't get on the uh, I don't get on the thing either. <laughs> anybody who wants anybody who wants to come on, you're free to come on just to have a mask with you. Yeah. Have a mask. We need to try and maintain the rule uh, the rules as best we possibly can, keep it safe. Yeah. Um yeah. At the end of the day, I told you you should have got two mics. Oh that's quite the budget. Uh might yeah. have to get one of them. Do you, know what, do you know what I'll get? I'll get um, one of my old brushes out the back, take the brush off the end, tape the mic to it and yeah. hold it as a distance. But yes, we oh, will yeah. be outside the stadium doing this back in the fresh air. Um, it'll make a difference. So anybody who wants to appear in the background can come and wave as usual. Um, <laughs> call me and Kev two fat blokes like they normally do. Standard. Sh- no respect. No respect at all. I missed it, Kev. <laughs> I'm not jealous in the slightest. I'm not jealous <laughs> in the slightest. Yeah, yeah, Peter, if you came down, we'd be like the three tenors. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're worth that much, but um, I'll no, take that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we'd we'll be looking for change. We'd definitely Equally, looking for change out of that. You'd be one of them Scottish tenors that nobody wants to accept. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I've been called worse. I've been called far worse. I'll tell you. <laughs> gotta go because the time's running out. Um, it's five past eleven. I know. Right, like tomorrow, I'm going to be dressing gown on. I'm going to be dressing gown on. I'm going to bed. You look like a flasher. <laughs> <laughs> right, you don't wish. forget to like, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next week for another episode of Red <sighs> TV. Go on, Kev, give us a flash. No, I was going to do something no. then. <laughs> <laughs> you have to cut it. No. <laughs> See you later. See you later. See you.